Hey guys, this is Mike Keenan here. Today I'm going to go over the TCP IP transport layer. This is also the OSI transport layer. So what the transport layer does is it provides a service for the application layer, which is above it. In other words, the application layer is the one that creates the data and then you know, using HTTP or HTTPS, it sends that data down to the transport layer. So once it gets down to the transport layer, then it turns it into what's called a segment. The protocol data unit for the transport layer is a segment. And another thing to keep in mind is that it is layer four for the OSI model and also for the TCP IP model. So one, two, three, four. So the two big protocols at the transport layer are TCP and UDP. Those are the biggest ones that you're going to need to be familiar with. Really the only ones that you're going to need to be familiar with for the CCNA exam and most other networking exams. Um, now TCP and UDP as opposed to say the network layer, the network layer uses an address and so does the, the, uh, the data link layer. It puts on there what's called port numbers and we'll get into that here in a second. We're going to go over port numbers, we're going to go over the connection versus connection list orientation and we're going to talk about fast versus slow. So in order to understand port numbers you have to understand the application that's running on a server. So every application that talks over a network is going to need to listen on some kind of a port number. Those port numbers range from 1 all the way up to 65,535. Now let's say you have um, a server and he's listening for connections. So he's running Apache and he may also be running, um, he may also be a bind server so he's listening for multiple different things so if he's if he's both those things then he's going to be ne needing to listen on multiple different ports so he's going to have to listen on port 80 probably 443 and also port 53 so when a connection comes in from another computer to the server the server is going to be listening for connections to its IP address but it's going to also need to distinguish which application it needs to talk to. So that's kind of the purpose for the transport layer on the server side. So if he is listening for HTTPS, then the service will pull the data from port 443 on the server and the server more accurately will give the data on port 443. So as an example, you can see here, I have my, my Firefox web browser pulled up and you'll see this HTTPS here. So if you were to go to Google using HTTPS, you would be using TCP 443. That's what that actually gets translated to, that HTTPS there. So that server over there at Google is listening on TCP 443. So just remember HTTPS equals TCP port number 443. So it's using the Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure. In other words, it's using HTTP with the Transport Layer Security TLS. And that's the server is listening on 443 for those connections. So let's quickly talk about these port numbers. So we have TCP UDP port numbers. Now it's a 16-bit integer, meaning that it is 2 to the power of 16, but we're we're also going to do a minus one there to get rid of the zero because zero isn't used. And what that equates to is 65,535 total possible ports that, that can be used, that applications can be listening on. Now the ones that you're going to need to remember are the well-known ports, the registered ports, and the dynamic slash private ports. Well-known ports are going to be one through 1,023. And what that means is like we just talked about, those are the, the ones that uh, that are just well known for those services. So HTTP is going to use TCP port 80, DNS is going to use UDP 53, and Telnet is going to use TCP 23, and so on and so forth. So those are your, your well known ports. Now your registered ports are the ones that, those are assigned by the Internet Corporation for assigned names and numbers, otherwise known as ICANN. And those ports are used by game studio developers and by other corporations. So I think like if you're into gaming like Blizzard and EA and um, other corporations like Microsoft, they have their own proprietary ports that they use out of this range here. And the last one is dynamic and private ports. So you can kind of think of this as anybody can use these ports. They're freely available for use by the public, by anybody out there. They can use these ports and they are not registered, they're not reserved, and they're not well known. So let's talk about the transmission control protocol. The transmission control protocol is connection oriented. In other words, it is reliable. 
but it's also slower than UDP. Because it is reliable, it's slower than UDP. So what does that mean? Well, it uses something called a three-way handshake whenever it establishes a connection. And it uses sequence and acknowledgement numbers in order to pass data back and forth. But what does that look like? So if we had a workstation over here, and we had a server sitting over here, the workstation first sends what's called a SYN request to the server. Now the server is going to send a SYNAC back and we'll just use these numbers. We use 1, 2, so 1, 2, SYN, and then the server sends a SYNAC back and then the computer will then send an acknowledgement back to the server and that will be number 3. So let's say during this process they carry on this conversation, they're going back and forth and let's say that this is 4 and this is 5 and let's say 4 was never received. Well, the computer, actually I should say the server over here, is going to realize that because he's going to see that it's out of order, it doesn't make any sense. So what he's going to do is send back, he's going to send a message to the workstation and say, hey I didn't get number 4, can you send it again? Number 4 will send it again and then that way the uh, server will know what information to respond with. So it's connection oriented. It allows for um, an errorless sort of communication stream. And finally, let's talk about UDP, the user datagram protocol. It is connectionless oriented and it is faster than TCP. So services like watching videos on the internet, you're going to want to use UDP for. So video and VoIP the voice over IP protocol. So video and voice, stuff that needs to be near real time in order for it to be effective, you would want to use UDP for. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be that the information is going to be connectionless because you may have the application layer up here may have some kind of built in, whatever application is running the VoIP or the video service may have a built in error detection and recovery mechanism. But the, as far as the transport layer is concerned, UDP will be connectionless oriented and that's important to remember. I hope you liked this video. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.